SMT Nation, we are back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a pretty interesting topic, and that is satellite to your smartphone. Yes, it is actually a thing, and it's probably going to work under most circumstances uh, where it is actually designed to work, and there's going to be some instances, guys, it is not going to work. But I think there's some things we have to understand. There's some realizations we have to come to. Our expectations need to be fair, need to be clear and established, and we'll do that all in this video. And actually, uh, there's a couple of different carriers doing this, and they're all kind of doing it in a different way with different satellite constellation builders. So I want to talk about all those things in today's video. And of course, drop me some comments and let me know what you guys think about this video and some of the things that we discuss within it. So let's go ahead and get started first with what exactly satellite to smartphone is and kind of what the fair expectation should be and who we think is actually going to do a good job with it. So to get things started first, I think we have to say that this is a pretty amazing time. We have the ability to possibly connect our smartphones to satellite services. The reason why I say this is amazing is because there was a time where if you wanted to connect to satellites, basically have cell coverage anywhere, you had to have a dedicated satellite phone, which they are enormous, expensive, and the service plans are also very expensive. With this satellite connectivity, in some forms of that connection, you're not paying anything for it. In fact, we see some of the like emergency messaging and emergency alerts have been successful, you know, in SOS with Apple and Global Star. And we see what Android is gonna be doing with Skylo and these types of things. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty awesome. The application of staying connected when there's no cellular terrestrial network available is pretty awesome. So very exciting and you know, you definitely see the use cases for it. And where things get kind of more interesting is what if we could actually use satellites as you know our form of connection when cellular connection on terrestrial isn't around, can we still actually use our smartphone like we normally would? Well, the first cool thing about that is your iPhone or your Android being able to connect directly to those satellites sounds amazing. You don't need to carry around this big bulky phone or pay for an additional piece of hardware, right? So you've got a two-in-one, your, your smartphone for like terrestrial cell coverage and also being able to do, you know, satellite coverage and your smartphone didn't get bigger and it didn't get bulkier, heavier, or more expensive. It's basically the same it's been for the last several years, right? So that's amazing in and of itself. Uh, the other piece to this is for those basic connectivities, you're not even really paying for it, right? It could be built into your plan possibly, maybe an add-on in the future, but like Apple's not charging for SOS connectivity. And you know, we haven't heard anything of, of that changing yet, but it might, and but it might open up to more connectivity options, right? So maybe better connections, maybe doing more with it, right? So not just for emergency texting, but maybe FaceTime, uh, maybe some data, like actual data usage, emails and stuff, you never know, all right? But uh, that's kind of where I'm going with this. I wanna start first with what T-Mobile is doing with Starlink and SpaceX. I just wanna say this, I love the innovation. I think satellite connectivity to the average person with the average smartphone is an incredible concept, and I never, poo poo on innovators because they're doing some incredible things. So shout out to what SpaceX and Starlink has become as they've brought home internet to people in the middle of nowhere who don't even have any type of cellular options or home broadband options. There's no wireline builders there. You know, there's no cable coax. There's no DSL, nothing. They're like way out there. They're on a farm. They're on a hill, you know, on a mountain or something. And the only thing that works is Starlink. And they're able to do that pretty daggone good, right? Uh, planes, and you think about boats and ships and all that other stuff. I mean, it is incredible what they're doing. With respect to currently what's going on with all of this with T-Mobile, Starlink, the FCC, there's interference issues with you know some, some, some frequencies that they wanna use and they've gotta turn up the power and it's gonna cause interference. Look, all that stuff is going to be a problem, but I think I still want to celebrate the fact that this is going to be happening for smartphones uh you know they're gonna have to work out some of those bugs and they're gonna have to figure out what they're doing to to make it a more meaningful connection uh you know they've been politicking to get power levels turned up so it actually works for something more meaningful than an emergency alert or um, an emergency message they probably wanted to be able to do facetime and video calls and they probably wanted to do some data sessions if you're going to charge people for it it's going to have to do more so i think that's kind of what it is and uh hopefully that gets better and improves in time i'm not happy to learn about all the issues and obstacles they have. 
I'm happy when they're able to provide something meaningful and something that matters, people are willing to pay for and enjoy. And then you look at what Verizon and AT&T have with ASTS. It's incredible. They too are also building this constellation of satellites and utilizing assets that appear to be on a good track to actually be pretty usable, pretty solid and reliable in the near term. And that's the other exciting part. We're not far from these releases. So very, very exciting times. So all this drawn out explanation as to what's going on, I think we have to understand something. This is going to take time <laughs> and it's going to be some growing pains along the way. Exhibit A, T-Mobile and Starlink. It is an absolute mess. It has gotten political. It has gotten messy. It is not working. It's causing trouble and they have to figure it out. And that's going to take time. Even ASTS has had some setbacks and some problems. And who knows if those connections are going to be meaningful and good at launch. Hell, I even got into a, a bit of an interaction with the CEO of Verizon's consumer group, Sampath, who, you know, when I asked him, how much are you guys going to charge for this? He said $0 for now. Maybe it's not going to be good enough to charge for initially. It's going to take time to get better. So I guess what this video is really about, for those of you that have no idea, that there was satellite connectivity coming to their phones from their carriers well now you know and then for others who are very very optimistic about it possibly maybe too optimistic about it maybe you need to kind of pump the brakes a little bit and kind of be patient so that you know you don't want to kind of go in too hard and then crash and burn when things don't work it leaves you with disappointment i do think that these connections will be meaningful and I do think that these connections will be good and people will enjoy them, but I just think we need to pump the brakes and I think T-Mobile and SpaceX are a really good example of that. They, they really built this thing up really, really fast. They had a little fraternity party to announce that they were going to be doing this and their partnership and they've been set back like two, three, maybe four times now and it's not a good look, right? So we need to have fair expectations. We need to pump the brakes a little bit and kind of understand where these things are. And I think also the other realization is that these connections will never, ever replace cellular terrestrial coverage. There's nothing better than cell towers, which have fiber circuits connected to them and high powered radio gear that is close to the user equipment, user equipment, meaning your phone or home gateways or whatever. It's closer. There's less range to travel. The signal quality stronger, less interference physics. You get what I'm saying? So I'm really happy to see the progress that all these carriers and these satellite operators are making. It's very exciting. Maybe this video finds you and this is the first time you've heard of such a thing. And I try to highlight the pros and I try to highlight the cons and give you guys kind of the right framework to understanding what all this means. And let's just be realistic about it, right? If they shoot for the stars and they land on the moon, that's a good thing, right? And sometimes I think we got to pump the brakes and kind of cool our jets a little bit, you know, and, and be a little patient and have some realistic expectations. And uh, maybe rushing to be first isn't really the best thing, <laughs> T-Mobile. And uh, maybe just doing it right is the best thing. And, and we'll patiently wait for it and enjoy it when it's ready. Uh, kind of like, you know, uh, when you season a steak and you take your time to cook it right, right? That, that bite into it is just fantastic. Hopefully this is that filet mignon or flank or whatever steak you like. Uh, maybe you don't like steak. Maybe you like, uh, maybe you like lamb. It's that leg of lamb right, that you patiently waited, you know, roasting for hours. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something. Give me that like and that share and subscribe if you're new here and stick around for more videos. There's a couple here somewhere. Uh, let you guys know that there's more content here on the channel and we're dropping more videos all the time. Stay tuned. Keep it locked to the SMT and we out this piece. Peace. SMT Nation, it is time for me to introduce to you Aura. Give you guys an incredible suite of cybersecurity protections to keep everything that you do online safe. Keeping you safe from identity theft, scams, online threats, including protections for your entire family. They offer a pretty much a worry-free trial period. Obviously, the pricing is very competitive, starting at $12 per month. They've got one simple and easy app for you to use. They've got incredible features, a million dollars in coverage. 24-7 expert fraud support, transparent pricing, the money-back guarantee at 60 days with a free trial, no strings attached. So with the odds of falling victim to an online crime being 1 in 4, this would change everything. You really should check them out. The financial fraud protection is worth its weight in gold. 
help keep your kids protected within boundaries that you set forth for them, proven to be the fastest, most reliable fraud alert system, and it's as simple as choosing your plan, simply setting up how you're enrolled, and then getting notified for all the things that it's monitoring. Start your free trial now. Use our link. It's down in the description, and it's also here on the screen, aura.com forward slash need. You guys can click the URL. It's hyperlinked down in the description. And again, it's up here on the screen, aura.com forward slash need. Protect yourself from all the digital threats that's out there in the world.